NASA says now is the ideal time to focus on the planet Venus. This follows the new revelation of conceivable life on the world. If you somehow happen to take a look at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space organization calling Venus a planet from damnation. Simultaneously, Mars turned into our predestined target. Such cautious naming of the deepest planets isn't an occurrence. During the fierce space race period, the Soviet Union was focused on sending expensive missions to Venus. The awful planet showed almost no possibilities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the empire. Because of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we at last know why. Join us as we analyze the declassified photographs from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one. In addition to the fact that it changed the international course of the world, yet the deficiency of the empire also sank numerous mysteries with it. The fact that the Soviets had a profound partiality for secrets, from running the most exceptional intelligence office in the world to being secretive about their potential extraterrestrial contact, means the former superpower holds various secrets within itself. In all honesty, before the U.S. of America dominated the majority of planetary endeavors in outer space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the empire has a long history of successful and fruitless space missions, its greatest obsession was on the internal, horrendous planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd perceive Venus as Venera, and thus the ensuing name of the mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the United States of America was occupied with sending its missions to the moon. So, in an intelligent way, the Soviets chose to utilize their assets elsewhere. We can't say that the whole fixation on the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets anticipate utilizing the planet's surface as a practical and great army installation? Or were they conceivably looking to colonize the planet in the wake of looking for any types of life up there? It's very hard to say why the Empire was fixated on the ghastly planet. Since the Soviets appointed these investigation journeys during the Cold War, they weren't precisely forthcoming with their points and targets. Truth be told, all that we know about the Venusian missions is based on declassified and unarchived proof, and even then, it's difficult to pinpoint what the Soviets were looking for and if they uncovered the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once, twice, or even thrice. That is simply rudimentary. The Soviets launched 28 expensive rockets to the shocking planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian air, while 8 landed effectively. Such complex missions had put the Soviets in a leading position in space investigation drives. Sure, the United States of America was a close second, yet NASA was more intrigued by satellites and innovative setup than investigating life on planets. Its warmth for Mars came afterward, neither particularly good nor particularly bad. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first organization to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another bundle of firsts on its resume. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet. It was the first to bring back pictures and sounds from the surface of another planet. That's right. The Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment, well before the US. So why do we seldom learn about such milestone missions? Recall what we said about the Soviet partiality for maintaining secrets. That is just one of the many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the famous organization was decommissioned in the fallout of the USSR, and the organization had to be revived with its new Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its historical information was either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 spacecraft into the Venusian environment. However, if we needed to make the most legitimate estimate, maybe the Soviet choice to investigate Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. This isn't to say that the space program wasn't hopeful about the livability of the planet. They were searching for economical water presence, power of solar radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been nearly impossible to measure Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, numerous cosmologists don't believe that the appalling planet could support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Additionally, because of its thick atmosphere, 
the atmospheric pressure on Venus is multiple times that of Earth. However, these are very recent and current developments, and to ignore the USSR's contribution to the investigation of Venus is comparable to editing history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was just to stoke the space race. You see, investigating more livable planets like Mars wasn't exactly off the table, yet it was more expensive than sending probes to Venus. Everything simply reduces to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the ghastly planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars on average is 250 million kilometers away. Such tremendous differences in distance add up to radical differences in cost. Also, if the United States of America wasn't the world's largest economy, it could never have been easy to investigate Mars. Different reports suggest that Soviet missions were unreliable and had significant technical gaps. Evidently, the spacecraft weren't suited to cover cosmic distances. Additionally, the agency had a poor track record of losing contact with its rockets, so it makes sense why the Soviet space program was choosing a shorter and closer journey that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The United States of America wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move intensified the space tussle and maintained its dominance. However, what's truly fascinating is why the U.S. focused on the moon in any case. Aside from unknown regions, NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, etc. The U.S. Space Agency found itself in a gridlock called the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into the Venusian environment, it went terribly wrong. This is precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and USSR were determined to win the space race. The most logical endeavor was to take advantage of two different options. It was a quiet understanding. Very decisively, the Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as the greatest milestone in the space tussle, achieving something that its serious partner had neglected to do. Notwithstanding the Empire's limited resources and fumbling government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its winning position against the U.S., in contrast to NASA's focus on the Moon. This key division wasn't without antagonism and misleading publicity. To conceal their significant failures with Venus, the American agency was prompted to malign the USSR's obsession with the planet. In popular media, Venus was dubbed the hellish planet, while Mars became man's destiny. These labels didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate superiority over the Americans, and they weren't unsuccessful in doing so. The Venera missions are nearly forgotten in present history. Nevertheless, Despite their dated origins, those missions were profoundly complex, advanced, and ambitious. In fact, if we need to pick an event that marked the dawn of the space age, the Venera investigations would take the lead. Harking back to the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and technical details of the probes, and for the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside a highly turbulent Cold War, the Soviets were fixated on optimizing their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more heavy lifting capacity than the U.S. of America. That advantage turned out to be quite beneficial. Building on their capabilities, the USSR began to assemble and launch larger rockets that were designed to withstand high altitudes and great distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft. Simultaneously, the Soviet academic community was working on a series of calculations and assessments to create precise trajectories for the Venus missions. Behind the scenes, their Mars programs were also running successfully. For the Soviet Space Agency, nothing was more important than developing complex instrumentation for these probes. This led to the greatest breakthrough in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet agency launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully make contact with the planet's surface. This pivotal achievement intensified the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were fraught with failures and gridlocks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite the program's gradual progress, 
the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian environment. The most significant issue with this approach was limited design capacity. The Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most advanced rockets of the Venera program in the 1970s. Their highlighting capability allowed them to conduct the first dual launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most intriguing decade in the history of space exploration. Indeed, the U.S. of America did attempt to come up with similar launch plans. So, why did the Soviet agency opt for dual launches into Venus? To understand this, you must recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. Clearly, the spacecraft was first launched to survey the planet's surface. This is exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly and the spacecraft entered the atmosphere of Venus effectively, the Soviet program continued with Venera 5. It wasn't just a repetition of the first launch. The second spacecraft was specially designed to collect unique data about the planet. In other words, the Soviets aimed to break through barriers of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about research and development. It was about ensuring that their designs and technologies were optimized. It was also about perfecting the methods and mechanics of interplanetary travel. However, for the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most successful and fascinating launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus's atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet. The planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures were already noted. At this point, the Soviets were trying to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 had surpassed all previous interplanetary investigations in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture color panoramic photographs of Venus's surface. At the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was one of the first countries to discover and recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. Venera D is a planned joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to investigate the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The abbreviation Venera D stands for Venera D in Russian, meaning enduring. The mission is expected to launch in the late 2020s or mid 2030s and aims to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of any ongoing or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable to study the planet's environment in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technological achievements and international implications. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human creativity and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and difficulties, the Soviets persevered in their quest to uncover the mysteries of Venus, a planet long thought to be hostile and unwelcoming to life. One of the most critical aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of mechanical probes to study planetary climates and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's neighborhood and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus's extreme climate, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Additionally, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration overall. The development of durable, heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and reliable landing techniques were crucial accomplishments that contributed to subsequent missions to other planets like Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had profound social and political ramifications during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, 
Achieving success in the Venera missions was not only about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The global community closely observed each Venera mission, recognizing their significance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to send data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus's harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface. These images revealed a rugged terrain dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing researchers with valuable geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. The panoramic photographs taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus's surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also encountered their share of failures and difficulties. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The challenges of operating in Venus's hostile environment, including extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius 842 degrees Fahrenheit and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, pose significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the perseverance and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming Venerity mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Venerity mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's nearest planetary neighbor and to extend our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.